Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lombasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osur. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, alleged child abduction remains under investigation. PM tells Rumbuka stop lying. And young people litter less than elders. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. Police investigators are now visiting houses in Saweni Lautoka to gather more information surrounding claims of child abduction. This comes after the police commissioner yesterday deployed a special team to investigate the claims that surfaced on social media via Facebook. Philippe Naikaso reports a 13-year-old boy is alleged to have been a recent victim who he claims was abducted by a group of men in Saweni over the weekend. The investigators have recorded the statement of the young victim claiming to have been abducted from a car wash on Saturday. Uh, the Commissioner of Police has directed uh, uh, that a team be formed and investigate the uh, claims that are being made because we know, understand the issue has gone viral. Uh, it's creating a lot of talk. It's uh, also creating a lot of panic with parents. Uh, we just want to reassure members of the public that we are looking into it. He has instructed that a thorough investigation be conducted. Similar claims have been made several times in the past, in its instance proving untrue. However, the police says they won't take any matters concerning children lightly. Uh, as we know, we don't want to speculate on the outcome of the case or the investigations per se. We just want to uh, ensure, give time to the investigators to conduct their work, get all the information, the necessary evidence, and then we will uh, make further comments. The boy who managed to escape from the abductors claims he saw a fridge with a girl his age inside. FBC News spoke to the victim's parents who are still shocked at what transpired over the weekend. The mother of the 13-year-old boy claims that his son was found unconscious on the side of the road just where the electric post is by some students of Rotonavula College who are travelling back to Nandi on Saturday. It's been difficult for us to sleep at night, especially for my son, because he keeps thinking about the incident, so we're just watching him closely. We're also still shocked at what happened, but I'm blessed that he made it alive. A team of officers also spent the day speaking to a number of people living around the Sereni area where the alleged incident took place. They're also urging members of the public to call Crime Stoppers on 919 or the Western Division Command Center on 9905 457 if they have any information that could assist with their investigation. Philip and Aikaso, FBC News. Prime Minister Wurenge Mbaini Marama is reiterating to the opposition and Sidopa leader Sitiveni Rumbuka to stop lying to the people of Fiji. Speaking to FBC News from Sydney, Australia, the Prime Minister has slammed demoning comments made by Rumbuka regarding Fiji's inclusion into the Human Rights Council as shameful. The Sodelpa leader doesn't support Fiji's inclusion into the Human Rights Council and the Prime Minister has labelled Rambuka as someone who is depreciative of Fiji's appointment. It's a shame that instead of uniting to celebrate this great achievement of Fiji being elected the first Pacific nation in the history of the Human Rights Council, he chooses to again spread lies to the Fijian people. Rambuka on his social media page claims Mbani Marama is a liar who has oppressed human rights since 2006. Mbani Marama says there is no place for politics of division as Fiji's progress is recognized internationally. This is a time for coming together and recognition of our progress, not for divisive politics. Both the Fijian people and the international community have made this clear. The Prime Minister says there needs to be a collaborative approach if human rights are to be protected at all times. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. It's been suggested that children in the school system are more conscious of littering than most adults. Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy says it's the generation above 20 years of age who act irresponsibly, not youngsters who learn about littering in school. 
Pranita Prakash reports 89 people fined for littering were prosecuted in court last year. The Environment Ministry confirms 972 cases of littering have been prosecuted in court in the last three years. Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy says to overcome this, more than 640 officers from various public authorities have been trained by the Department of Environment to enforce the Litter Act. We will now uh, are willing to put in resources to ensure that people really start behaving responsibly. And my feeling is that I think it's this generation, our, our 20, 25 years of age, are the ones that we have to deal with. Because what I can see in our school system, children are very conscious about uh, not littering. Over 1,300 people paid fines for littering last year. This is becoming a major issue and requires paramount attention towards ensuring that we put a stop. I mean, it's not even a slow st stop, it's an immediate stop. And so the maximum impact we place on it would bring the more, um, the, the better the results. The Lita Act 2008 prescribes penalties and fines for littering in public places ranging from $40 to $5,000. For breaches under the Environment Management Act 2005, a commercial company once found guilty of a pollution offense by the court can be fined up to $1 million. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The Parliamentary Standing Committee on Justice, Law and Human Rights began its public consultations on the adoption bill in the Northern Division today. Starting in Wainikoro and Daku, the committee heard submissions that raise questions on interfamily adoptions, teenage pregnancies, registration in the Volanikawambula, and customary rights. Committee Chair Elvik Maharaj says it was the first time for a consultation to be carried out in Daku, and the turnout was impressive, with 25 submissions received. What we did is we actually got Social Welfare Ministry to actually do a presentation on the bill itself. So she did a presentation and the members when they actually came to know what the bill was about and then they started commenting. So it was more so uh, all 25 people were giving in the comments and submissions as we were going through the bill itself. Fiji faces a huge challenge of transforming and decarbonizing the energy sector to meet its commitment of achieving 100% renewable energy by 2030. Eleanor Tarangai View reports government admits it is a big target that will take time to achieve. The world now has only 12 years to take the action needed to keep temperature rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius. So the need to introduce more renewable energy resources, along with energy efficient technology, is greater now than ever. Because we want to stop the emission of carbon into the atmosphere, climate change, sea level rise, all of these things. Uh, even though Fiji is a small country, whatever we can do to help that out, we will certainly want to do that. Fiji aims to generate 100% energy from renewable sources in 11 years' time. So far, only half of our energy is renewable. In Fiji now, about 50 to 60% of our energy is renewable, hydro, solar and all this. But to convert that to totally renewable energy is going to be a challenge. One of the biggest tasks at hand for government is phasing out the use of diesel fuel in our transportation sector. How do we make people use things that are, you know, not that don't burn all this diesel fuel that will be changed? Obviously, we need to put electricity into transportation. You know what I mean? Electric cars, electric buses, and that. But that's going to take some time to be able to do that. Having all our energy come from renewable sources may seem like a tall order. Even government admits it's a huge target. But it is ambitious and necessary if we are to remove carbon from the atmosphere and limit global warming. Eleanor Turangayview, FBC News. Still to come, tells graduates told to pay back. And stray animals present health threat. Details after the break. Students under the Tertiary Education Loan Scheme are urged to update their information with the Revenue and Customs Service, 
as soon as they find employment after graduation. The FRCS has noted that in some instances, graduates have found full-time employment but have not made any effort to repay their loans. Ritika Pratap reports since its inception in 2014, TELS has assisted 55,000 students. Although the number of defaulting students under TELS is not many, but in the long run, this could affect others who want to study under the loan scheme. You will find a few bad ones, you know, whom you want to say, you know, they've ex uh, absconded or, you know, they have uh, defaulted. Uh, but I don't think, you know, at this stage I would say that that is a major problem. The students only start repayment when they get full-time employment. The repayment is at the rate of 20% of their annual gross earnings. There again, you know, many have found jobs and... Uh, what we found was, you know, until and unless, you know, we started receiving, you know, the PAY files from the employers, we found out that, you know, some of the students are employed who, who have not updated the information with uh, the tax office and were not paying, repaying. Now, if, if you take a loan, you really have to repay it because it, it's to fund continuing education for Fijians, you know, and that is something that, uh, that, that, People should have responsibility to do this. Uh, if they have a case where they disagree, they can appeal and talk to us, or talk to the SG. The FRCS says there are some loyal students who have found jobs offshore and have made arrangements to remit their loan payments from there. As of January, the outstanding tertiary education loan stood at $229 million. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Hundreds turned up to the Sacred Heart Cathedral in Suva to mark Ash Wednesday today. Families, friends and working people took our time from their busy work schedules to be part of sermons. Ash Wednesday, also known as the Day of Ashes, is a day where Christians confess their sins and devote themselves to God. This marks the start of the Lent period leading up to Easter. Lent is celebrated over 46 days, including 40 days of fasting and six Sundays on which fasting is not practiced. The growing population of stray animals on our streets present a threat to safety and health. And the Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals records hundreds of strays every year. This comes as the SPCA and veterinarians from overseas are currently conducting a desexing clinic this week to help manage the number of roaming dogs and cats. Kelly Badala reports. Stray animals are usually poorly cared for and often carry diseases. Last year, the SPCA recorded more than 800 stray dogs and cats. So there's a lot of um, stray animals around, and so I know that that causes a problem with driving at night and car accidents and, and injury to animals, which is really um, a big problem. You get if you can't find homes or fosters, they get euthanized. They transfer diseases um, if they're not vaccinated. USA veterinarian Dr. Kimberly Kodaka says stray animals pose a great threat. Most obviously are zoonotic type diseases, which are um, parasitic, um, infectious, uh, like leptospirosis, um, different uh, worms. Um, so there are uh, a variety of um, situations here in the community in the Fiji Islands where we want to reduce that. Head coordinator for the initiative, Shanil Narayan, says they aim to desex 500 animals this week, including companion animals. It's pretty high in silver area. Like uh, we, uh, for the past one or two years, we have been collecting data with the city council, uh, Ministry of Agriculture, and stuff. Uh, recently, there has been a lab to outbreak going on as well. So that's the thing. If we take care of our animals and if they're healthy and stuff, then we like we don't get anything out there, like the zoonotic diseases and stuff. The clinic also aims to work with communities to educate them on the importance of interactions between humans and animals. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Fiji at a national, regional and international level has done a lot of work to empower women, says Minister Responsible for Women, Merisani Buniwanga. This is evident in the tremendous work carried out by women's NGOs, civil society and faith-based organizations, as well as members of national women's groups. Kelly Vadala reports. In the lead-up to International Women's Day, a ministerial forum consisting of those who have contributed to women's empowerment have been reminded of the importance of their work. I'm also sure that none of us can confidently say that we have covered everything and that everyone is doing or has done for Fijian women because the work being done 
is massive. There's still a lot to do. And I'm sure that you will all agree with me that with whatever we are doing, there will always be more and that we can still do more. Minister Marisene Buniwanga says it's important that all stakeholders work together to meet the needs of women at the grassroots level to raise their status. You can tell me how my ministry is performing and what we can do to better the services that we provide. I'm happy to hear of how we can work together to change how things are done for women at all levels. Director for Women, Selai Korobusere, says the forum aims to discuss challenges and issues faced by women, especially in the workforce. On Friday morning, we have invited uh, close to 200 women for a development partners symposium where women from the grassroots level get to listen to our development partners on the programs that they have and can assist them. The minister also highlighted the ministry looks at working with development partners who work on supporting gender development and women's empowerment in Fiji. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Early detection is the best prevention was the main message the Fiji Cancer Society Chief Executive to RFMF officers at the Black Rock Camp in Nandi today. The Army officers took time out from training for a mission later in the year to undergo cancer screening this morning. Philippe Nicasso has more. These Army officers are taking the proactive step of screening themselves in order to ensure they are not in any danger of the third leading cause of death in Fiji, cancer. Very important that when you know that you have these signs and symptoms uh, for PSA, there's different signs and symptoms, but in most of them, it, the common is just loss of weight. Um, you know, when you're losing weight and you don't know what's the cause of it, make sure you have everything all tested eh, and come and get tested for, for cancer, whichever cancer it may be. This is also the second time the Fiji Cancer Society has visited Black Rock Camp for cancer screening and they've been overwhelmed with the increase in officers choosing to get tested. A few of these cancers, especially prostate cancer, cervical and breast, can be detected early, can be treated at an early stage. If left late, then there's really nothing much that can be done. I think uh, it's an important uh, task as command has directed for all RFMF personnel to go through this test, so I'm uh, quite happy that all RFMF personnel, especially here in Black Rock, that we are also undergoing this test. The Fiji Cancer Society says they will continue to provide screening to Army officers to ensure that any cancer is detected early. Philip and Icaso, FBC News. Coming up in sports later with Jamie, 10 athletes confirmed in track and field events for Pacific Games. But Kelly joins you now with business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up after the break. Ministry extends license application window. And in growing Fiji, work on Lombasta Siberia Road begins. Stay with us. Dola, I am Eleanor. For the best classic hits, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Seni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Dino. I'm from Africa, Coral Coast, Singatoka. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altrigai, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Leading business tonight, the, the Health Ministry has extended the license application time frame for tobacco producers and sellers. Through the Tobacco Control Regulations 2019, the MOH has given current tobacco and suki vendors, retailers, wholesalers, manufacturers, distributors and importers until the end of this month to apply for the license and registration. The extension to the application period is due to concerns raised during this year's budget consultations. The Health Ministry says this is a one-off extension and should not be expected in the future. The regulations require all relevant parties, regardless of size, to file the applications with the Permanent Secretary for Health and Medical Services before this extended deadline in order to obtain the license or registration. The Ministry warns no exceptions will be made. 
The Fiji Institute of Accountants received a boost of $86,000 sponsorship from the Vodafone Fiji Limited and Respect Bank for their annual Congress. FIA President Zareen Khan says the Congress will provide a platform for young people to participate, gain knowledge, experience and get exposure. Khan says topics such as innovation, resilience, technology, culture, arts and social responsibility will be discussed. The event will be held at the Shangri-La Fijian Resort from May 24th to 25th. President Major General, General Retired George Kondrotti will be the chief guest at the event. Each year we have motivational speakers whose um, personal and professional journey is an inspiration to many. This year is no different and we believe that delegates will be inspired, empowered and empowered and further we would, would, would have been able to foster a culture of innovation both personally and professionally. We now join Sharon with the latest from the money market. The Reserve Bank of Australia ended its 30th straight meeting with interest rates at a record low of 1.5% yesterday. This has left the door open to future rate cuts amid pressure on the global economy and the downturn in the Australian housing market. Their GDP data released today reinforced recent evidence of broader concern over the outlook for the country's economy. The annual growth rate was only 2.3% against the forecast of 25 but the Reserve Bank of Australia still expects the economy to grow about 3% in 2019, thanks to their strong labor market. Meanwhile, the U.S. dollar held gains against its peers this morning, thanks to their higher U.S. yields and better-than-expected data released today. Strong numbers regarding U.S. service industries and new home sales ease some fears about the state of the world's top economy. And that's all the latest from HFC Bank. Benaka. The Fiji dollar held well today despite the upsurge in the U.S. greenback. Our dollar gained against the currencies of our major trading partners, Australia and New Zealand, and also rose against the euro and the yen. Taking a look at the commodities market, oil prices were down slightly at $56 per barrel. Gold was fairly steady at $1,287 an ounce, and silver closed down at $15.08 an ounce. Works are ongoing for the sealing and rehabilitation of Siberia Road in Lambasa. A 1.4-kilometer portion of the road is being fixed by the Fiji Roads Authority. Expected to be completed by the end of this month, the road is being used by hundreds of people daily for commute to work, school and town. The rehabilitation project will directly benefit the hospital, a hotel, a preschool, home for the elderly, a school for children with disabilities and some settlements. Funded by government, the roadworks cost around $1.7 million. And that's a wrap from the business desk for tonight. Jamie joins you now with all the very latest in sports. Thanks and good evening in sports tonight. Fiji Warriors brace for tough battle against Tonga A. Eh? And Fiji Sports Commission pushing to upscale local coaches. This and more coming up. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mitch Shepherd. Mitch Shepherd is hot. I'm Charlene Robert, Mirchi FM, rocks in Lambasa. I'm Sona Men, Osori Jackson, Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt, I'm in Baba Singh Alliance, Mirchi FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Kritika from Jackson, Osori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Osori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is hot. The Fiji Warriors and Tonga A go head-to-head -head in the World Rugby Pacific Challenge at ANZ Stadium in Suva on Friday. The Pacific rivals last met in 2018, with the Fiji Warriors hammering Tonga A 57-7 in the last round of the WRPC in Suva. Warriors coach Sinirushi Serovakula says despite the big win last year, they are not underestimating the Tongans, who he believes are back with a vengeance. They look better from last year. Uh, both teams and I, uh, I believe they, they are ready they are ready and, and, and they're sick of uh, being in the, and losing all the time they, they come into our shores 
and uh, it's going to be a tough game against the Tongan. Uh, you look at them, they're, they're very bulk and, and very very fit, uh, but uh, everything will decide out there on, on a Friday how uh, the team that plays smart and the team that really need, uh, need it uh, on, on the game day. Ten athletes have qualified in track and field events for July's Pacific Games in Samoa. Athletics Fiji head coach Albert Miller says four athletes recently qualified in their final Grand Prix in Lautoka. Miller hopes more will qualify from the Coke Games and its final trial next month. At the moment, it's a fairly small team, I think, uh, if I'm correct, probably around 10 who's have, who have qualified, basically with an A and a B, which is a rather low number for us, but, uh, you know, that's the way it goes. Eh? Uh, so, like I said, we're keeping our fingers crossed that, uh, you know, some of the athletes that were on the original list will uh, start doing some amazing stuff <laughs> in the next the few weeks. <laughs> The Fiji Sports Commission is increasing its commitment to upskill local coaches across all sports this year. The commission is currently hosting a three-day clinic at Albert Park in Suva to allow coaches the opportunity to share ideas and experiences. Meli Tavanga reports. This is the second coaching clinic and the Fiji Sports Commission is hoping to get all coaches recognized. And it was the realization that every athlete that we have, good or bad, needs a good coach and this is an opportunity for them to come in and for three days to learn from each other and to learn from a team of speakers that are coming in to speak. Commission Chair Peter Maisie says any good athlete is the product of good coaching skill. Every athlete that we have, good or bad, needs a good coach. So we weren't giving coaches their due. So now coaches are part of all our programs right around the country. Uh, we have trained the trainer programs to train the coaches up. Permanent Secretary for Youth and Sports Maritino Neamani says the government is fully supporting the cost of the development of sports in the country. These coaches are certified, they are accredited and they are actually coaching according to the, the international standards. The coaching clinic ends Friday with a national sports conference to be held on Saturday. Meli Tavanga, FBC Sports. Fiji football coach Christophe Gamel hopes to develop more local players that will follow in the footsteps of Fiji wonder boy Roy Krishna. Gamel says the return of the national football captain to play in Fiji's friendly internationals this month is not only a boost for the team, but also the development of individual players. Kurei Tandulala has more. Fiji football captain Roy Krishna is excited to don the black and white stripes and give local players valuable and professional tips. I'm coming for sure, and, uh, but I won't be playing the first game because uh, we have a game on the 17th. But I'll be playing uh, straight after the game next. But yeah, I'm looking forward for the see the boys and wearing the uh, white and black strip. National coach Christoph Gamal says he plans to develop more local players to play international standard football and secure contracts with overseas clubs. No, at the moment, uh, Kishan is the, the top number one, I think. Uh, I have one or two ideas uh, on one or two, but I need to see, to see them uh, more performing on the field because at the, at the end it's based on the performance and all the key performance uh, with, uh, that I struggle with since two years already. Meanwhile, the Fiji football side will face New Caledonia on the 18th of this month at Suva's ANZ Stadium before meeting Mauritius at Churchill Park in Lotoka later on the 24th. Kurei Tandulala, FBC Sports. Rugby League is set for a major boost with the announcement of the busiest international schedule yet outside of the World Cup. As Rugby Union deals with the fallout for proposing to shut out Pacific Island nations, leagues doing the complete opposite. All Blacks captain Kieran Reid has confirmed his impending post-World Cup arrival in Japan, announcing his decision in a press conference today. There will be a new winner for the UEFA Champions League this year after defending champions Real Madrid were knocked out by Ajax in the round of 16. Ajax beating Real Madrid 5-3 on aggregate after a 4-1 win in the second leg today. In today's play of the day, Kane Evans' intervention just after half-time ensured a comfortable second period for Tottenham when they beat Borussia Dortmund 1-0 in the Champions League this morning.
That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie will join you later on with weather and then new media. Check out the camera that doesn't allow you to do anything but press the shutter button. It doesn't even have a screen to see the images straight after. Details coming up. My name is Nan, I'm from Lumbua. As Prenny North is famous, the radio is famous in Radio Fiji 2. The radio is famous in Radio Fiji 2. I like to listen to Seema Nakasi. I like to listen to Radio Fiji 2. The radio is famous in the country. I'm Uncle King, singer to the town. I'm a taxi driver. I'm famous in rugby. I'm famous in Radio Fiji 2. In tonight's new media, sorry, we take a look at relaunch. It's literally a camera without a screen. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. Hope your week's been going well so far. We're having showers when we least expect it. In other news, we're going down the road towards the weekend. Well, let's see what the weather is like at your favorite locations. Taking a look in the west, the sun is always in favor of this side, so the sun mostly stayed here today. Eastwards from Pek Harbour to Suva, it was slightly cooler with showers. And up north, sunny spells were quite comfortable, looks like the perfect weather to take the kai out. At sea, southeast winds gusting 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, low tide at 11.29pm with high tide at 5.52am, sunrise at 6.06. For tomorrow, it will start bright, but rain clouds will dominate by afternoon or evening. Tomorrow's temps, Sabu Sabu will be the coolest at 29 degrees. And looking further on to Friday, keep your umbrellas and raincoats handy as light showers are escalating towards us. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, should real estate agents who increase prices of homes have their license suspended? Well, I think uh, government needs to do a study to understand, you know, what are the forces in the market that are creating the hike in prices. Yeah? Once they understand what those are, then they'll be able to address the needs of uh, real estate agents and the public. I mean, that's why we pay our taxes, right? So, we're looking at the prices of these houses being ridiculous, and I think the government should put in a place or system where these prices should be checked, or else um, um, uh, just stripping their license of these uh, real estate agents. I think their license should be taken off. I think uh, they have to make the guidelines for the commission. I think they should suspend the license because the price is too high. world of the weird and not wonderful stuff for some parents a new cheese challenge has parents posting videos of themselves abusing children by flinging slices of cheese in their faces recapping the main stories for tonight alleged child abduction remains under investigation PM tells Rumbuka to stop lying and young people litter less than their elders now for these stories and others you can tune in daily to our sister radio station gold FM to our poll question segment this week we're asking were you happy with Fiji's performance at the Las Vegas Sevens? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day, sent in by siblings Micah Rambonu and Lucianne Chantel from Newtown Asinu, with the quote, it is during our darkest moments that we must focus to see the light. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, good night. Bula, never go malakai lelama, go ngai nakas, on the wang rong nambula fib, number two, I end a serie.
Royal Washington Saiso e Lambasa, é um hotel que está em Nova Roma e FM, número 2 em série. Eu sou o Dr. Meli, eu sou o Natal e o Nohinga Toca. Está aqui na Nova Roma e na Nambula FM, número 2 em série. Eu sou o Dr. Meli, na Nambula FM, número 2 em série. Na FM, eu sou o Natal e o Nohinga Toca. Aqui está o Dr. Meli, na Nambula FM, número 2 em série. Bula FM, número 2 em série.